Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to our review of the Huawei Mate 8. The Mate 8 was announced at CES 2016. Uh, we did a, a hands-on as well as an unboxing, but here is our full review of this device. We spent uh, close to two weeks with this device and I have to tell you, it is really, really solid. Now, getting to nitty gritty, Huawei had a good year last year with the Nexus 6B. In 2015, people considered this one of the best devices out there. And I have to say, Huawei really put a lot of good work in the manufacturing. So of course, the Mate 8 follows that trend. You can see some of the design similarities and also just the build quality you expect uh, from Huawei. And as well as also the packaging, Huawei has done a really good job in improving the overall appearance of this device. Uh, considering it costs $600, so it definitely feels like you're spending a good deal amount of money and it shows with what you get. Now the Mate 8 has uh, pretty much a close to unibody uh, design. You can see it's got a uh, fingerprint sensor at the back, but what is really important is that it feels really comfortable and solid in your hands. It feels like you spent a good amount of money and you know what, you'd be satisfied with just the build. Dual SIM, micro SD expansion up to 128, fingerprint sensor at the back, uh, which we'll talk about more in a second, LED flash, 16 megapixel shooter, and it's powered by a Kirin 950 processor, which either uses three or four gigs of RAM with a 4,000 milliamp battery at the back. Now, you can either get 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and of course that cycles between three or four gigs of RAM. Now, that fingerprint sensor is super sensitive. Not like crazy super sensitive, but fast enough to recognize your fingerprint once you actually put it on. And I like it because it really, it, it just does a good job in recognizing your fingers as you tap and you can easily use the device. The display is a six inch display. It is not a QHD display. It's not a 2K display, it's a 1080p display, but it is sharp and vibrant as you can see here. Um, it's also running Android 6.0, but one thing you notice there is no app tray. Um, you can, of course, you know, go through your multitask, you can go home or back, but there's no app tray. And it's got, I have to say, similar to an iPhone or I, sorry, iOS design in terms of the way the folders are, how the, uh, uh, the uh, layout is in terms of also accessing your notifications and shortcuts. Really iOS uh, um, intent is specific, to, so to speak. So allowing users who are maybe transferring from iOS device to this to feel more comfortable in, in that sense. Like I mentioned, running Android 6.0, uh, right off the bat, but of course the uh, Huawei is running their own skin on here, which is something to take note. That being said though, uh, even though their skin is on here, this device is pretty spiffy. The Kirin 950 processor does a very good job in performance as well as you, you have either three or four gigs of RAM. So it definitely shows that this uh, device can definitely handle all its needs. Now the settings layout, it can be a little confusing if you're going from uh, a different Android device, but it's still easily accessible in the sense that everything Thing is broken down to sections and there is an advanced section where you can check out things like your um your memory storage as well as memory management there's a memory task killer built in there's a battery optimizer and it shows you here that on smart mode we can get up to 62 percent left we can get up to 32 hours of battery life battery life is fantastic with this thing i absolutely love it and if you put it on the ultra power mode you can get up to 57 hours uh, of battery life at 62 percent that's what it's saying but i would say in my use i've pretty much gotten close to about 48 with the battery life on here uh just on regular use so i definitely like it now what i want to show you guys now is some gaming on this device uh basically highlighting how games are actually shown and how they will perform so listen to the speakers and see gaming and definitely enjoy <laughs> So the Kirin 950 processor does a fantastic job of gaming and the speakers are excellent. I still wish they were front facing, but it sounds really, really good. and something I think a lot of people like. Now, in terms of uh, the camera, 
the camera is a 16 megapixel shooter. The rear camera front is eight megapixels. So you get, uh, what well, you also get here in the camera software is something again that has a very similar look to iOS in terms of some of the, some of the design placements, but it's really robust. So besides the fact that you slide from panel to panel to select uh, whether photo or video, you do have uh, you know deeper options in there. You've got also a manual mode in there, which allows you as well as HDR, which allows you to actually change things on the fly. So you can use that, uh, pop that open on the side there and change things from your immediate centering to your ISO, uh, from your ISO to your um, white balance, your exposure, all that fun stuff. The white balance is the only one where basically it's not in the Kelvin scale, it's, it is in preset scales. But you can also do this with video too. So you can slide over and also do that in video and do that while you're recording, which is great, not as extensive uh, as photos, but I like the fact that Huawei is also joining the fray and adding a lot more uh, functionality to its camera, uh, which is good. So um, I like that aspect there and I think a lot of people will. So why don't we take a look at a video clip as well as photos from the Huawei Mate 8 and you know, we can uh, continue from there. So here's a video recording uh, from the Huawei Mate 8. It's recording at 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh, the device doesn't do 4K, but it does 60 frames per second, which is the new, you know, the new-ish now, at least on YouTube. Um, and uh, it does a really good job. Mic picks up very well. You can hear me quite clearly. It's a little bit windy up here, so that's the idea to see how well that does. And uh, it's got some good stabilization, even though I'm walking around holding the camera. As you can see there, the wind blowing off that. And as we walk closer to the city skyline, you should get a good idea of how well this is. Now, I wish it was 4K, but I like the fact that they've locked down a, a certain, you know, spec level for it, you know, 60 frames per second, 1080p, and the camera does a good job. Overall, I'm quite impressed uh, with what it does, you know. Uh, there's a time where 1080p was a problem for many, many phones, but um, you know, doing this well, and hopefully we'll see some more improvements. I'm not sure why it doesn't do 4K. I'm not sure if it's just something they set as a limitation or it's the chipset chip set itself, but I'll walk up to the pigeons here, say hi a little bit, and then continue this video. The Mate 8 camera does a good job recording in 1080p and also actually a decent job in low light photography. I want to see Huawei improve in that sector, but I do like what they've put out. Overall, I have to say though, I am quite impressed with the Mate 8. There's some things I wish it had like a 2K display and also a slightly improved camera. But overall, in terms of performance, fingerprint sensor, uh, gaming, all those things that you do on a daily basis with a smartphone, this thing is actually very solid. Doesn't feel like a six inch device in your hands, but feels like something you can easily comfortably hold. And I will definitely recommend it. Now the pricing is a $600 starting. So for some people it might sound steep, but it's an unlocked device, so you can definitely pick it up. And something you should definitely take a look at as you start off the year. So guys, if you have any questions or any comments, let us know. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, do subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank you.